Hey guys, back again with another inbox review, and this time more of an, uh, another sort of a Cold War iconic warbird, really, an avalized one. Um, it is, of course, the McDonnell Douglas Phantom FG1 in 172nd, uh, which was uh, produced by Airfix. Um, to be honest with you, this one is getting harder to find now because I think they've actually stopped the production of it, which is a great shame because the Buccaneer is still around, although that's even getting rarer now. Uh, but again, a very iconic aircraft of the Cold War period. Um, the FG-1 was really the navalised version of the actual um, uh, US famous Cold War bird, the Phantom II. Um, and unlike its American equivalent, it was equipped with uh, Rolls-Royce Spey engines, uh, which actually were far more powerful than the ordinary... Uh, I think uh, Pratt & Whitney R4Ds or whatever, JT4Ds I think they had on them. Um, so they also the electrics were um, um, uh, were basically um, more organised as well. They were sort of more on updated as well for this for the British equipment of uh, the Phantom for our own aircraft carriers, um, which then were HMS Eagle and HMS Ark Royal when the Phantom entered service with the Fleet Air Arm in 1969. Initially, the trials were carried out on HMS Eagle in 1969, and uh, they were looking at turning at phantomizing her, uh, but the then government decided against it, and uh, basically Eagle would be paid off in 72. Um, and obviously, Art Royal was modernised um, at great cost, um, and uh, they decided to go with Art Royal. And the Eagle was just left um, in a reserve fleet as a source of spares to keep the Art Royal going until 1978. But the crazy thing was, Eagle was in a far better condition than her sister. So, work that one out. But anyway. Let's move on to the crux of the actual uh, matter itself, the kit. So I'm just going to turn this camera around and we'll get on with the review. And here she is. Uh, as I say, this kit essentially is getting harder to get hold of now. I was very lucky to snap this one up for about £29, um, which, to be honest with you, is the going rate now, because initially when it was released, it was around about, what, 21 22 uh, but as I say, this is getting harder and harder to find now because they've stopped the production of this particular kit. Um, which, again, as I say, is a great shame because, I mean, it was a good seller when it initially was released. Um, nobody had ever, Well, the only other company that had actually done this version of the Phantom was Fujibi. And if you've seen the prices of those on eBay now, it's just ridiculous prices, to be honest with you. Uh, far more than what I paid for this one. Uh, but I have to say this kit is better. Uh, the moulding quality is far, far better. Um, and it's basically retooled the original Phantom that they had, which I think was the F4B, uh, which was released in the mid-60s or late 60s. Uh, but uh, anyway, um, the navalised version, as I say, was known as the FG1. The RF1 was the FGR2. Um, obviously, when Art Royal paid off in '78, um, they disbanded 892 Squadron, which was the last of the fixed wind air squadrons. And obviously, Art Royal was the last fixed wind aircraft carrier that we ever had, conventional aircraft carrier that we ever had. Uh, so sad days. I mean, they initially they were designed to go on a proposed aircraft carrier that would have taken over from Eagle and Art Royal eventually, CVA01. Uh, but because of a defence review in 1967, it was decided that uh, the emphasis would be actually taken on towards um, submarines and their nuclear missiles and not so uh, conventional aircraft carriers. So uh, the day of the aircraft carrier was virtually over. Um, and um, shortly thereafter, a lot of the big carriers paid off. And as I say, Ark Royal was the very last conventional aircraft carrier left in uh, around about sort of, I think January 1972 after Eagle uh, had paid off and retired. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, the, the, I don't know if any of you have ever seen the series Sailor. Uh, you can still get it on DVD uh, and it will just show you those glorious days of the old Phantom, Buccaneer, the Gannett, the Wessex and also the Sea King on the last conventional flat top we had. 
Uh, so I recommend you go and that or get clips off of um, on YouTube as well. So there you go. Anyway, waffling over, let's get on with the review of the kit. Um, the kit number on this one, if you want to still try and get hold of one, and I do bear mind they are getting harder to get hold of now, is A06016. That's A06016. You've got three colour call outs there. Uh, one of the naval, naval support unit, which was the first um, Phantom Squadron uh, assembled at um, Yelverton in 1969. 767 Squadron, which was a principal training unit for the Phantom, and then the final squadron, 892, which was embarked on HMS Ark Royal from 1970 until 1978. So there you go. And again, you've got this iconic shot of the actual um, Phantom on the waist cap of the um, Ark Royal with the SAR helicopter in the background in case it had to ditch so they could rescue the pilots and then obviously you can see the extended nose wheel everything's tied up she's on full power ready ready to be launched off the on the steam catapult of Art Royal so yeah a memorable powerful sight so there you go right and uh, let's have a look and see what we've got with the kit first off again Familiar old Airfix pamphlet, history about the aircraft uh, itself, and then obviously when you open up, you've got all your symbols at the bottom there during the construction of the kit, and then obviously you can do it in flight, or as it's being launched, or even with its wings folded and the nose folded back, as though it's going to be stowed into the hangar. So there you go, that's your three options. First start, obviously the first thing is the cockpit, so thereby you assemble the pilot and navigator's seat, as you can see there, and obviously you've got the overhead rest as well. Then attach the bulkheads into the canopy along with some decals, obviously, obviously once you've painted them. You put your seats in, including the pilot's control yoke. And then you've got the navigational um, panel for the navigator at the back there, and obviously you add the decals onto it. Then you add the nose section onto the cockpit, as it were. Um, and then obviously, uh, where are we? Where's step nine. Step 10 is basically fitting the air bleed brake at the back of the aircraft fuselage. And then obviously you position it to whichever angle you want with the tail planes. And then obviously it gives you the option here of having the air brake open or closed in case you want it at rest with the canopy open or as if it's on the waist um, catapult. And if you do do that, you'd have to have the actual um, tail planes angled forward as it were, ready for launch. And again on the other side of the fuselage, as you can see there. Then you've got the inner air intakes, as you can see there, with the colour guide. Put them inside the fuselage on either side, as you can see there. Then add the cockpit into the interior of the fuselage on the right-hand side, and not forgetting to weight the nose, obviously, because otherwise it will become a tail sitter, and then you button up the fuselage, as it were. Next step is to put the actual aircraft's back spine onto the fuselage. And then obviously add the, um, oh hang on, where are we? You've got the uh, aircraft jet blades which go onto the interior of the air of the kit. As you can see there, along with any exhaust uh, nozzles, as you can see there. So you look in, you can see the detail. And then obviously got the underwing uh, spine there with the gear bay doors closed or open, along with the... Uh, looks like the main wing spar and again you put in the holes on part of the sub uh, bottom wing section for whichever payload you want on there whether it be martra missiles bombs or um, I suppose exocet missiles and wing tanks and again you know what you do there is add part of the wing assembly to the um, fuse lower fuselage and add the upper and lower fuselage together and then put in what this looks like um, I think air coolant ducts 
which go into the radiators. And then obviously you add your decal for the interior of the air intake and put the outer assembly of the air intake on, as it were, on both sides. Okay. After that, you put the upper wing plates on and then add the tailplane. Now, depending on which version you're going to do, it could be the earlier Phantom without the ECM pod or the latter version with the ECM pod on it. I'm probably going to leave it with the ECM pod on it, actually. And then obviously you add your tailplanes to so whichever angle you're going to set them at, whether it be on a waist cap or, stat or just on an ordinary sitting or flight position. Okay, as you can see there, as indicated by the outline of the aircraft on the instruction manual. And then again, you put another part of the wing into, well, the wing tips onto the lower part of the wing itself. So it's got that familiar cantilever and then obviously add the elevators as well. Now, obviously, if you haven't it on the waste cart, I think the elevators were down, ready for launch. And if it's in flight mode, then they'll be up. Then you've got the um, uh, tank sponsons there, which go in. And then your air brakes, you've got them optionally open or closed. Depending on which way you're going to set your model, as it were. And then again, going through it all again. Obviously, this is the launch position with the um, elevators down, etc. And then you've got the outer wing planes as well. And again, same scenario where the air intake's closed, as it were. Or if you're having the wings folded, you've actually got um, wing tips with them molded folded as well. That sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> as though it's getting ready to be stowed down in the hangar towards um, for maintenance, etc. So again, with the air elevators you'd have them up obviously you got your wing tips up etc um, and then the outer uh, wing planes as well and again your air brakes will be closed right and then you've got outer engine panel which was for bleeding the engine obviously when it's getting ready for launch during flight it will be closed and again you've got the option of having it open or closed as you can see there and moving down, you've got the inner air, it looks like I would say air filters, which go with just by the nose, as you can see there. And then you've got the part of the plate where the exhaust mechanism, which goes on the back there as well. And then obviously you've got the actual exhaust nozzles, which go on. And again, optional whether you're having it in flight mode obviously you put the undercarriage door bays up and obviously with the air fix stands you have to buy them separately they don't come with the kit now and then again if you're having it with the aircraft either on launch position or just getting ready to be stowed and the carriage bays would be down and it's giving you the indication of how they would sit as you can see there and obviously you add some of the actual mechanism to the actual undercarriage leg as well okay Moving on, next stage again, you had the inner um, undercarriage bay doors, as it were, at a said angle, and again, more sub assemblies there, which you can see. And obviously, that one is a good guide to how it should be sitting, and the inner um, door bays as well. Then you add your tyres, which I think are weighted, I'm not quite sure. And then obviously you've got the option of having the uh, aircraft in a stow position when it's in its normal when the carriage leg down, or in the launch position with the, the wheels, nose wheel bay extended. I might have it extended as though it's getting ready to launch. Then you've got the um, support arm going on as well. And then after that, obviously, you've got the undercarriage, nose wheel gate, gear bay doors, and the tyres go on as well. Okay. Moving on, then it's giving you the option of um, which armament you're going to put on your model, as it were, uh, underwing tanks, which I'll probably put on. Um, you can have the old Sidewinder missiles on there, or a cluster of them. You've got your... Um, 100 pound or 100 200 pound bombs which go on your Martra uh, launchers etc it's entirely up to you how you want to actually have it posed with and what weapon load as it were 
and again it's showing you the options of whichever low payload you want to put onto the bottom of your actual kit as it were okay and again final sub pieces you've got the refueling probe probe you can put in you can either have it in or stowed or extended it's entirely up to you and obviously then you've got the arrestor hook which goes onto the rear of the actual fuselage you're going to have it either up or down and again with your canopy you can either have it closed or open okay and then finally you've got the option of having the nose fully extended or basically in the uh, stow position as it would be if it was going down into the uh, aircraft carrier's hangar okay and then obviously you've got the Ferranti radar which you can see there and um, I'm not quite sure what that is but there you go on the far part which says part 106 maybe that's the uh, sub assembly oh yes it's the assembly of <coughs> the actual Ferranti radar and then again you can fit on the stow position showing the Ferranti radar or as it have it as normally closed so that is basically the assembly of your kit there you go anyway again typically with airfix everything comes in one bag then you've got your color call outs and then obviously you've got your decal sheet right here as well so what we'll go through is the various parts of the kit I have previously, oh, I actually haven't actually uh, previously opened this, so I'll have to open it with my teeth again. Because I forgot the scissors. I'll tear the bag open. Alright, here we go. Now, this is not too dissimilar to the FGR2 that I started building over a year ago, which if you remember was part of the... Um, a group build I was getting involved in but unfortunately one side of the fuselage was short moulded. Thankfully on this one it isn't so here it is. There you go lovely and crisply detailed as you can see there lovely panel line details and including the air brake lead system there for the engine nicely done. Again you've got some nice detail around the exhaust area and the heat shields Beautifully captured there and obviously you've got the option of the nose which again I think you can cut off if you're doing it in the stow position. That's your lower wing plate there as you can see and this one holds the actual um, wing spar as it were. And these are the optional parts for your air bleed door which opens or closes. There's your rear tail planes which you can see there. This is the actual, sorry got that wrong. My mistake. This is the wing tips. If you wish to have it in the aircraft's wing folded position as though it's being stowed down into the hangar. Again, edge of the winglet there is nicely detailed. You've got some lovely panel line detail there. I think I can get it into shot. Very crisp and clear. There isn't an ounce of flash. So that's beautifully moulded. <coughs> Excuse me. Bit of a dry throat. And then obviously you've got the lower wing plate and lower part of the fuselage, which you can see here with the inserts for the air brakes, which you can see there as well, which are beautifully molded again. And then you've got the start of the nose wheel gear bay, which you can see there. And there's some lovely internal molding in there as well. They really have beautifully molded this. So there you go. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? And again, you've got your normal wing planes here, as if you've got the wings down. Um, and this is in with the lower wing edge down, in case you've got it in the um, launch position. There's your air brakes again. There's some nice interior detail there, which I've caught beautifully. That's your elevators on your wing. Um, this is more, again, your front um, elevators on the wing as well. And these are for when you've got them down, etc. So there you go. Moving on again. Third sprue. We have the back wing spine, uh, uh, the back plate of the actual spine of the fuselage, which you can see here. You've got the access panels for refueling it, which are nicely done there. 
some nice rivet detail there and again this is your tailplane and obviously this is if you want it with the ECM pod on it I think this is principally for the FGR2 which was the follow-on kit and then again you've got your standard tailplane here which admittedly is upside down so I'll get it around the right way which is how the aircraft first entered surface with but again you've got the option of which one you ever want to do an earlier version or a latter version again you've got the intakes here which you can see and the plates at the beginning of it which are nicely molded to get it round the other way you get a better view and obviously that's there this is the other part of the assembly for the air um, inlets for the engines and the outer covers as you can see here which are nicely molded and then obviously you've got your standard wingtips here with the um, aircraft wingtips down at the correct dihedral which if I get round that way you can see so yes very nicely done indeed next up obviously you've got the uh, cockpit itself as you can see there, obviously either side you've got decals for the panels. Again, you can go aftermarket with Edward and get the actual etch brass detail set, which is probably what I will do, just to boost the cockpit up a bit. There's your main undercarriage legs there, which are nicely detailed. And again, your tyres are flat spotted where they're weighted, which is a nice touch, including those wheel, uh, wheels as well. Nice detail on the wheels as well. And then obviously you've got your compressor blades there for the rear of the exhaust nozzles, which you can see in there. And that's your exhaust nozzles for your spay engines. Nicely detailed there. And again, uh, what else have we got? Yeah, you've got your um, undercarriage bay doors there. And there, and there. And then obviously you've got your seats here, which are nicely, well, not bad. I mean, admittedly, they've got this seat belts moulded on there, but obviously if you do the aftermarket set, you'd have to scrape that all off. Okay, and then obviously here you've got the tail hook for the rest of the world when it needs to land on the aircraft carrier. Um, there's your refueling pod if you want it extended. Okay, and that's obviously if you want it stowed on part 8, was it 3 there? Um, what else have we missed? Have we missed anything else? Obviously you've got your grab handles for your ejection seats there, which is nicely moulded. That's your main cockpit panel. Again, you use a decal for that, but I'm going to go aftermarket. And then obviously there's your navigator station right there. So that's that really. There you go. I think I've covered everything on that. Um, yeah. And then obviously you've got your weapons loads with your Exocet missiles, your bombs, your central main tank, your outer wing tanks um, and there's the tailplanes for them, your Exocet missiles oh, it's side, sorry, not Exocet, Sidewinder missiles there and that must be your Martra missiles I think and then obviously you've got the weapons racks right here as you can see you've got a multiple choice of them and obviously there's your underwing pods as well so very nicely molded indeed again nice panel line detail on the wing tanks as you can see there and on the central one as well so yes very nice indeed uh what else have we got i think we've got two more sprues uh yeah this is mainly to do with your radar Bay there again nice level of detail on that and that's for your Ferranti radar and then obviously you've got your tail planes again heads of the Amartra rocket packs and that's the basically the detail for the interior of the nose if you should have it stowed down as though it's going down to a hangar and there's your main Martra uh, rocket pods nose gear leg extended and then obviously you've got one standard I'm not quite sure what this is. I think it's the other half of that, which goes together in case you want to dis uh, display the actual radar, as it were. So there you go. And then finally, you've got your clear parts. Now, I'm not going to take them out of the bag, but if you have a look at that, they are very clear, very 
beautifully detailed, easy to mask. You can get a mask set for this. And obviously you've got your uh, radar dish there, as you can see, which is clear. Now, why they've moulded that clear, I do not know. But, uh, well, the mind boggles. And obviously you've got separate sections for the canopy in case you want the canopy open. So there you go. Uh, so that's the main parts of the sprues, which I'm going to put back into the bag. And altogether you've got about one, two, three, four, about half a dozen sprues there altogether. So I'm just going to put them back in the bag at the moment, so if you just bear with me a few seconds guys. So I've got the last part in there, which is the clear parts in the bag. Okay, and then what we'll go on to is the colour call outs. Right, first colour call out. I think before that, you've got a diagram of where all your stencils go, and there are plenty to go around, including what goes on your ex on your sidewinder missiles. Uh, yeah, that's going to keep you pretty busy. I think there's up to around about 239 stencils. Yeah, I think that's going to keep you busy for at least two to three days before you even put the main decals on. Mm. <laughs> and uh, for being 170 second that is going to be yeah mightily eye hurting i'll tell you um yeah <laughs> so yeah that's going to be something to bear in mind anyway the first color call out which you can see here is for the naval support unit which was based at yeoverton around about 1969 and this was the first squadron actually formed with the Phantom, um, and obviously they were used to working this one up, um, getting pilots familiar with the actual aircraft itself after having flown on either scimitars or sea vixens, um, possibly buccaneers. Um, so this was the first unit to work up at Yeovilton, and obviously you can tell with the day glow insignia on the back here, I can't quite make out what it is, it looks like a stalk. By the looks of it, which is most unusual, but it's the overall dark sea grey and white uh, with the silver and gunmetal uh, heat shields and exhaust, and then obviously you've got a nice colour call out on the weapons loads here as well. So yeah, second option is the main training squadron, which was based uh, shore based at um, Yeovilton, which was seven six seven squadron, which. I have a feeling if Eagle had been modernised, this squadron would have been embarked on Eagle as she had her life extended, but there you go. Um, you can tell that by the familiar swallow or, or eagle on the back of the tailplane there. Um, this was principally based at Yeovilton in around about 1971, which incidentally was the last year of Eagle's service. And then finally, you've got... The more familiar markings of 892 squadron which was embarked on hms art royal and this is the color scheme circa 1974-75 um i'm not sure if there's an aftermarket set for the silver jubilee one because it had a sort of a color of red white and blue on the nose here um that would be a good one to look out for. Uh, I know they did do it on the Fujimi kit, but they chose to do the overall basic scheme that they had on Art Royal, which again is dark sea grey uh, with white underneath of surfaces. And then obviously you've got the familiar Omega sign, which obviously indicated this was going to be the final shipboard uh, conventional squadron on an aircraft carrier. So yeah, sad days, but there you go. Um... So that's probably more than likely the one I'm going to go for. Because um, I'm actually, when I get around to building again, obviously sometime in the future, I would like to basically build every aircraft that was on the board the art roll in the final years. So there you go. Anyway, that sums up kit up in a nutshell. Um, very highly detailed, as you can see. Beautifully crisp, clear parts. Um, I'm sure that does it with the range of phantoms that actually they do now. The FG1 has been reissued in the disbandment scheme of all black. 
at uh, Lottie now. Oh, there's one thing I did forget to show you before I finished. That's the decals. And here again, you can see the amalgamation of stencils you're going to have to put on. As well as your you know, side cockpit panel decals. Um, the familiar roundels. And then obviously they've separated letters, obviously, for the underneath of the undercarriage bay, which is a good thing. Um, you've got the day glow of the naval support unit with a stalk and then obviously 767 squadrons with the familiar yellow eagle and then the more familiar red with the omega sign of 892 squadron so yeah they i think are printed by cartograph so they should bed down beautifully so there shouldn't be any problems with those at all so there you go as I say, that is the Phantom FG1 uh, naval version uh, by Airfix in 172nd. And by God, if you can get hold of one, grab them because they are going very quick and they're getting harder to get hold of now, guys. So I shall finish here at 31 minutes. Um, I hope you enjoyed the review and if you can grab hold of one of these, I know it means pain through the nose, but they are going quickly and they're getting rarer and rarer to get hold of now that's unless airfix change their mind and decide to re-release it again but we'll see um i'm glad i got one in moustache and i ain't giving this baby away at all <laughs> uh, no way anyway until the next time get kit crazy happy modeling stay safe and um if we get backgrounds the camera I'll see you guys soon. So uh, there you have it. That is uh, a rather beautifully looking kit of the Phantom FG1, as we all remember them from the old Art Royal. So there you go. Anyway, waffling over. Let you guys get on in the bench. Uh, carry on with your great builds out there. As I say, I hope you enjoyed the review. Um, I didn't bore you too much. And um, I'll speak to you guys again soon. Take care for now. Cheers. <laughs>